Where did the name Africa come from? Africa. Africa. Is that a is that an African name? What type of name is that? That name comes from a white man, a Roman man. Rome, that is in Europe. He named that land when he conquered Hannibal in the Second Punic, Punic War. Do you come from a white man? No, that's impossible. America, America Vespucci, you know about that one from school, right? Do you come from him? So how are we African American? Yep. How are we black? How are, we, how are you a Henry? Is that your ancestor's name? You see all the confusion that they done caused us all these years, and that's why we come out here. That's the reason why it's imperative that instead of Negroes go over there and play basketball and be ignorant for the rest of their life, they come over here and learn that they are God on this earth. Right. They learn how to get up out of captivity, bro. Right. You really don't know what the Lord got in store for you because this is just the beginning. question do most do you, most young black men do they like to read no they want to play the game all day that's why they ain't got no faith that's why they can't believe on what God is saying that God is a real thing that he makes everything that you see around you happen because the scripture said seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read when the last time that you read through the scriptures it's been a minute so guess what? How you gonna have faith in me? Matter of fact, finish this out and then get Romans 10, 17. Don't let me leave before we get that. Read. Seek ye out of the book of the Lord and read. Read. No one of these shall fail. So none of the prophecies that's in the Bible, they not gonna fail because this is written in there. You living in the ghettos because do our people, do they live in the good part of Hot Springs or the bad part? The bad part. This, this ain't the part of Hot Springs that they got on the flyers with white people rolling down slides and little kids enjoying roller coasters and all of that. This is the part of Hot Springs that they don't promote. The part of Hot Springs don't nobody see. God said that she was going to live like that. But you want to know why you don't believe that? Romans 10, 17. This is why we don't have no faith as a people. And it stems from slavery because as a, as a black man, what's the number one thing that you couldn't do in slavery? Be free. Yeah, but guess what? You could you could go outside. They didn't have chains on you the whole time. That was actually the entry of slavery until they destroyed you. You understand that, right? You had your own separate housing apart from the white man that you lived. But the number one thing that they will beat you for is if they found you reading. You know that, right? Yes. That's how they destroyed the black man. That's why you don't even understand that this is your history book. Right. Ain't nothing about this book fake, but this is why you don't believe. Read. The book of Romans chapter 10 verse 17. So then faith cometh by hearing. Faith coming by hearing. Is it hearing the Xbox? Hearing the video games? Hearing NBA young boy? Hearing uh, 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 um, anybody? Who, who you listen to these days? Whatever evil communications, faith don't come by that. This is what faith come by, read. And hearing by the word of God. You gotta listen to this Bible. You gotta read this Bible. And that's how you're gonna increase your faith. Cause it's just said none of these are gonna fail, right? So I don't gotta get it. You already know Christ is a black man. You know that, right? You know that this is fake and that's all crap. All right, I'm gonna I'm I'm run you back. Now I want Deuteronomy. Deuteronomy 28. I'm going to take you back to the beginning on how this all started. While we out here, we, we, we the princes of the earth, but we out here looking like slaves. We out here living like slaves. You understand? Just like this brother over here, the, the greatest news on earth is coming out. But we act like we couldn't care less. That black and mild is more important. That, 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 that weed that you finna go smoke is more important. This is how we got to this state. And what was your name? What's your name, man? You act like you don't know your name, bro. What's your name? 
Darius, all right? I just want to know your name, bro, so I know how to address you, all right? Ain't that respect? That's respect, all right, Darius? So I'm going to show you according to the Bible, all right? Read. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 28 and verse 15. But it shall come to pass, if thou wilt not hearken unto the voice of the Lord thy God, to observe, to do all his commandments and his statutes which I command thee this day. So God said in the future, because right now we're in the wilderness with Moses. This is when he just delivered us from the hand of the Egyptians, the people that had us, the first enslavers of our people. He delivered us and said, hey, I just saved you from the same conditions that we're living in now, right? He saved them from that. And he said, these are the conditions, right? He said, it's going to come to pass if you don't listen unto me. Because remember, he gave us commandments. He said, if you don't listen unto me, read. That all these curses shall come upon thee and overtake thee. So guess what? The condition was for the so-called black man and black woman way back thousands of years ago. If we did not hearken unto God's commandments, there was going to be curses upon us as a whole people. And they were going to overtake us. You understand? Let's see what these curses are because guess what? Our people don't believe in the Bible no more. Right. When it comes to the word of God, our people got all type of doubts in their mind. They got questions in their mind. Matter of fact, when they, when they see the Bible coming out, it's a joke to them. They don't understand that this is the reason why they living in hell. This is the reason why everywhere in America, all around the world, we live in the hood. While we oppress as a people. This is the reason. Let's see the curses. You see these surroundings where you live at right now? Let's see what it says. Read. Verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. God said we was going to be cursed in the city. Meaning that, guess what? The city that you live in, it ain't going to be like the city of the other nations. Because guess what? Sis, I'm going to ask y'all a question. When you go to the hood, is it a lot of Chinese people around here? Okay. Is it a lot of Arab people around here? Understand? It ain't nobody but so-called blacks and Hispanics that live up in here. God said, if we broke his commandments, you was going to be cursed in your city. This is how you was going to live. Understand what I'm saying? Because guess what? Every, every black man and woman, they got desires to live in Chanel. They got desires. They say, hey, I'm going to hoop and play basketball and get my mama out the hood. That's in every rap song. That's on every TV show. That's what every NBA player say when he, when he picking up that hat, picking on what team he want to say with. Because guess what? Inwardly, we know that we curse in the city and we do not like the conditions we live in. That's what God said. If you disobey me, this is how you will live. You understand? Give me that in, uh, in Baruch. I think it's Baruch 4 in um, 31. Miserable are the cities. You got that for me? Is that it? Baruch 4 and 3. Read that. Because it says curse, right? This is going to give you a bit more understanding on what it meant cursed in the city. Read. Baruch chapter 4 verse 32. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. Read that with some power, bro, because you don't even sound convicted to me right now. Read. Miserable are the cities which thy children serve. It says miserable are the cities where our children served. Because guess what? Before, before Negroes in green hoodies and Timberland boots or country ass boots was living in the hood going to play basketball, before they was oppressed and living in this da daggone hood, guess what you was doing right here in Hot Springs? You know what you was doing? You was a slave. You understand that, right? That's why you, if you see the, the different communities that we live in, it's separated till this day. Just like back at the plantation, you couldn't come live in the, in the White House unless you was a cool, a cool Negro that, that sucked master's toe every time he stuck his foot out. You understand? You had to stay in, 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 in the abandoned, sloppy, uh, uh, basically the conditions you're looking at right now with, with boarded up houses and all of that. He said, miserable are the cities that you serve in, bro. You see what I'm saying? You like, I, you like living like this? But guess what? You've accepted it because it's all you've ever known, right? So it's almost like you wake up every day, this is usual.
But guess what? This is not normal. Right. That's why I asked you if you've seen any other nation of people live in a condition like this. And you told me no. And I'm showing you why. Because God said we was going to be cursed in the city. You understand? Go back to Deuteronomy 28. Read verse 16 again. Because you said that you knew this history, right? Right. So read that. The book of Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 16. Cursed shalt thou be in the city. And cursed shalt thou be in the field. We were going to be cursed in the field. Who, what group of people do you know that pick cotton in the cotton field day and day night? What about sugar cane field, all of that? Do you know any other people that did that? No. Showing you what? That this is a true book. Understand what I'm saying? Did that prophecy fail or did it come to pass? It came to pass. You understand? Even if you want to go, let's put it like this, your, your work field or your field of study. Guess what? All right, you go to school. What type of grades you get? C's and D's. C's and D's, right? But you, you, you probably know some smart black people, right? If they are uh, all A's in their class, right? They could be on a roll. But guess what? They don't get the same scholarships and opportunities as, as the white boy do, do we? No. He's not getting letters from Harvard saying, hey, hey, little um, genius come, black man, come learn from us at Harvard. We would love to have you here, nigga. No. Guess what? You still got to go to Howard, nigga. Right. You still got to take your ass to Pine Bluff. You could be the smartest, you could be the whatever. You could be the best basketball player or whatever. But guess what? If you ain't on that white man program, he ain't gonna take you in. You cursed. No matter how you wanna look at it, bro, bro. And that's not because of just economics or whatever. That's because God said so. You understand what I'm saying? Jump to verse uh, 32. Verse 32. Thy sons and thy daughters shall be given unto another people. Another race, meaning they was going to go into slavery. And they was going to be given unto another race of people. Who else did that happen to? Who? Let me know. Educate me. Let me know something new. You, you seem like an educated brother. Who else did that happen to? Nobody. That's why you can't think of nobody. Read. Unto another people, uh -huh. and thy eyes shall look, and fail with longing for them all the day long. Really? And there shall be no might in thy hand. Meaning that, guess what? There's nothing else that you can do. Once, once you get over here and they start selling you to the James, because what's your last name? Henry? Do you think that that was our last name before we got over here, bro? No. no. But guess what? Your last name is Henry because you were on the Henry plantation, my brother. Wow. Did you know that? You don't, you don't even own a name no more. Matter of fact, this land belonged to the natives and they came over here, they stole everything, bro. They stole everything. I mean, matter of fact, out here in Hot Springs, you know about all of the native history that's here, right? No, you don't know? Guess what? There's a lot of na native history around here. They used to occupy this land out here until the white man came and killed everybody with disease. Then guess what? He went and took you from the west coast of Africa and said, all right, we done killed these, these Indians off because they gonna fight us. Let's, let, let, we gonna make that mistake again when we get these niggas. We gonna back break them, understand? We gonna strip them from their heritage, make them not believe in the Bible just like you do right now. And guess what? We gonna keep, it, keep them in these conditions. Matter of fact, I want that. Uh, 37. That's a curse too, bro. Read that. Deuteronomy 28, verse 37. And thou shalt become an astonishment. An astonishment, that mean like you look at something and you're mind blown. You can't believe it. Matter of fact, till this day, white people can't even believe that they even pulled off slavery, bro. Because if you know the history, we taught them everything. We taught them how to read them. Hell, we taught them how to take a bath, bro. They wasn't even bathing over there in Europe. We taught them that. We invented the, the almanac, meaning we, we taught them how to understand the weather. Understand what I'm saying? We were the scholars of the day. We were the inventors of everything that you see on this planet Earth. So the fact that they even pulled off slavery and they got niggas out here. Listen, the word is coming out, stuff that they don't, they didn't, never heard in their life, but all they want to do is hoop and play basketball. They do that every day. 
But they ain't never seen us out here in aid. When it comes to anything dealing with the word of God or their history, they, we don't want that. That's an astonishment. Because guess what? If it was a so-called white man or, or, or white woman that lived over here, we see it all the time. You know what they're going to do? They're going to pull up and listen. White people ask me what these is on the bottom of my shirt before I see our own people do. That is an astonishment. We don't care about nothing but, but women, drugs, money, basketball, sports, that's it. And the game. The daggone game. Game ain't gonna get you nowhere in life, bro. I'm telling you right now. All of you need me, then I'm gonna be a pray on me. Oh, what time to rise up? Rise up. This is your kingdom of fall right now. Your time up. Time up. This is the work of God. Now your kingdom reach to the stage of decadence The water rise up and it's very evident We come for claim the roots and take back we heritage We were never savages Taken from the decayed state No we kindred weight Meditating scriptures and increase with faith While leading reach destruction await Bind them kings with chain Our time to rise up, rise up This are your kingdom of fall right now Your time Say Shalom, most high in Christ bliss. This is Captain Emmanuel. Subscribe to IUIC Arkansas on YouTube. First and foremost, scan that QR code. Follow us on all platforms to help us push this truth. Facebook, Instagram, X.com, TikTok, Need I Say More, everything. Just type in IUIC Arkansas and hit the follow or subscribe button, all right? Most high in Christ bliss. Read. And thou shalt become an astonishment, uh -huh. a proverb, and a byword among all nations, whether the Lord shall lead thee. You know what a byword is? Isaiah 65, 15. A byword is a name outside of the given name that God gave us, right? Because if I ask you, what is your race? What is your nationality? Your nation of origin? What is it? Black. Is there a land of black? Is there a country called black? Is there a language called black? No. So what you mean, black? You see what I'm saying? That doesn't even make sense. Is your skin literally black? No, it's brown. Right? So so what are we talking about when we say that? What, you see what I'm saying? We don't even understand that this is our heritage right here. But you know what happened? The Lord stripped that from us. Now your name is Henry. So all you know is, is, is slave knowledge, what they've been taught you from the plantation. That's all you got with you right now. Understand, read. The book of Isaiah chapter 65 and verse 15. And ye shall leave your name for a curse. The scripture says we were gonna leave our name, meaning Israel, the names you see on this sign. Cause are you black American? Are you black American? Like that's what they will call you today? You just said black, man, so I, I know that, right? But guess what? According to the Bible, you are Judah. Yeah. You are an Israelite man from the tribe of Judah. That's right. From now on, that is your race, your nationality. So if I ask you again, hey, hey, Darius, my man, what, what race are you, bro? What's your nationality? What you going to say? Judah. Or it started with an I. An Israelite. You understand? From now on, you understand that that is your race. You don't call yourself black no more. Right. You don't call yourself African American no more. Let me school you. Where did the name Africa come from? Africa. Africa. Is that a is that an African name? What type of name is that? That's why I said, let me help you. Because our people, we so dumbed down, we don't even have basic understanding. That name comes from a white man. A Roman man. Rome, that is in Europe. He named that land when he conquered Hannibal in the Second Punic, Punic War. Do you come from a white man? No. That's impossible. America, America Vespucci. You know about that one from school, right? Do you come from him? So how are we African American? Yep. How are we black? How are, we, how are you a Henry? Is that your ancestor's name? You see all the confusion that they done caused us all these years? And that's why we come out here.
That's the reason why it's imperative that instead of Negroes go over there and play basketball and be ignorant for the rest of their life, they come over here and learn that they are God on this earth. Uh, they learn how to get up out of captivity, bro. Uh, you really don't know what the Lord got in store for you because this is just the beginning. But uh, let me let the Bible talk some more. Read that. Isaiah 65 verse 15. Uh -huh. And ye shall leave your name for a curse uh -huh. to my chosen. Uh -huh. For the Lord God shall slay thee and call his servants by another name. And he was going to call his servants by another name. Did you know that? You didn't know that, did you? So guess what? The people calling themselves Jews, they not the real Jews. The people calling themselves Israelites or Israel, Israeli, they not the people of the Bible. Because the Lord prophesied that the children of Israel, they was going to go by another name, bro. Matter of fact, Jeremiah uh, 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 17 and 4. I'm going to show you something. Not only were we going to go by another name, we was going to forget our customs. We was going to, we, we weren't even going to want to hear this Bible no more. They were going to ask, instead of us dying for the scriptures, because we died to keep the commandments back then. Now we at a, a point when we don't even know if we believe it, yet alone sacrifice our lives for it. Read. Jeremiah 17 and verse 4. And thou even thyself shalt discontinue from thy heritage that I gave thee. So he was saying, Jeremiah, you, along with the rest of your people, you are going to discontinue from your true heritage, your true root. Read. And I will cause thee to serve thy enemies in the land which thou knowest not. In the what? In the land which thou knowest not. Before they brought us over here on slave ships, do we know what this land was? No. So what is Jeremiah saying? That guess what? You are going to not remember that you are an Israelite. You're not going to remember that you're from the tribe of Judah. And you're going to be put on slave ships and you're going to be serving over there in Arkansas. Right here in Hot Springs, Arkansas. That's right. That's what the Lord is saying. Because give me that bunch of heritage, Sirach 1711. Bring it out! Our people, when it comes to heritage and, 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 and great people, we think about Michael Jordan. It's obvious. Larry, uh, uh, not Larry, uh, um, who's some, some basketball players? Kobe Bryant. We were like, see, he was the first black man to ever break the record of, of the most rebounds. In a, that's as far as our mind go back. Right. If you want to take it a little bit farther back than that, you go Martin Luther King. Right. <laughs> If you if you a little woke, you go Malcolm X. This is the book of Ecclesiasticus of Sirach, chapter 17, verse 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge and the law of life for a heritage. Sis, did you hear that? So according to the Bible, what what is our true heritage? Uh, Israelite? No, that is our race, our nationality, which goes into it. But read the scripture again. Sirach 17, 11. Besides this, he gave them knowledge. And the law of life for inheritance. He said he gave us the law of life for inheritance. Meaning what? The laws of God. You understand what I'm saying? That's why we over here not knowing who we are. Because like he said, if you broke my commandments, curses was going to come upon us. And we're reading those right now. Because, come here for a second sis. What's your name? You said Angel? Keisha. Keisha? You see this right here, this, sh this ship with all of these bodies on it? Yeah. You believe that that happened, right? Yeah. You think that, that, that that's in the Bible? Yeah. You look like you hesitated for a second. Why'd you hesitate? Uh, a little skeptic. A little skeptic, right? Yeah. But guess what? We're going to prove it to you right now. Because he had a problem believing. He came up here earlier, just like I'm sure everybody in this community. He said, I, I know like this, you know, but like belief in the Bible, I just really ain't sure. Right? I'm going to show you the proof that the Bible is real. Deuteronomy 28, 68. Bring it out. Deuteronomy chapter 28 and verse 68. Bring it and the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. So, you, did you go to church? Sometimes. Sometimes. So what were the children of Israel doing in Egypt? Um, worshiping the other, no, slavery. Building. Slavery, thank you. Uh, right. Building pyramids for yeah. Pharaoh, right? right? So, just to give you context, right? I want you to stay with me. Keep your finger right there, my brother. Go to Revelations 11 and 7. Because I'm trying to give you the understanding of what Moses is telling his people thousands of years ago in the wilderness, bro. You understand? 
You, what's wrong, brother? You all right? What's wrong? All right, your demeanor is throwing me off. I'm just making sure you good. I am. You understanding what's coming out? Yeah. All right, read that. Revelation chapter 11 and verse 7. Verse 8. Yeah. And their dead bodies shall lie in the street of the great city. The great city is Babylon. Talking about America, right? Because where are we right now? Where are the Israelites right now on the earth? Scattered. Scattered, but where is the bulk of them at? In the hood. In the hood. But what country, sis? Let me help you. Or continent. Thank you. What continent? Uh, Africa. No. We do have remnants in Africa. Don't get it twisted. But where are you at right now? What continent are you at right now? Oh, uh, United States. The United States or North America, right? America. What do they call the greatest, the greatest country on earth? You, you in school right now. What do they say the greatest country on earth is? The USA. So when it says that great city is talking about the USA. That is what the Bible is prophesying about, all right? So I want y'all minds to stay with me before we go back to Deuteronomy 28. Read, and they're dead bodies. Dead bodies meaning spiritually dead. They have no understanding of who they are, what God requires of them, nothing. Read, shall lie in the street of the great city, Read. which spiritually is called Sodom and Egypt. So the Lord references America to Egypt. He calls this place spiritual Egypt. Why do you think he calls this place spiritual Egypt? And you said it earlier, what were the Israelites doing in Egypt? Building for Pharaoh. What's another name for it that you said earlier? Slavery. Slavery. Back in that time, that landmass, it wasn't called Egypt. That's actually a Greek term. Back then it was called Mizraim. You understand? Where Ramses the second and all of that, were, we had us in captivity, all right? So when he says Egypt, this is what he's referring to. Read. Exodus chapter 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Out of the house of bondage. Hey, Libro, what does Egypt mean? We just read it. Come closer. I, I need y'all to pay attention. Because we ain't going to be out here every day, bro. This is all y'all got. Y'all go to school every day. But guess what? Y'all don't know when the next time y'all going to be in front of the prophets again, man. Right. So I need y'all to pay attention because as young black men, this is the most valuable, vital, and important information y'all are ever going to hear. All right? Read that again. Exodus 20 and verse 2. I am the Lord thy God, which have brought thee out of the land of Egypt. Out of the land of Egypt. Now it's about to explain what Egypt means. Read. Out of the house of bondage. So Egypt means house of bondage, right? So what the, what's another word for bondage? You said it earlier, sis. What's another word for bondage? Slavery. Slavery. Understand? So let's let's dive back into it. Deuteronomy 28. Because you got to go precept on precept to understand, right? So y'all know we ain't making nothing up in our own words. Read. Deuteronomy 28, verse 68. And the Lord shall bring thee into Egypt again. Or slavery again. Read with ships. Uh, Have you ever been taught that the Bible before? Never. You've never been taught that, bro. And that's why we don't believe in the Bible. Verse 46. And they shall be upon thee for a sign. So the curses of God. All of the things that you see on this sign right here. Your ancestors back looking like this. You living in this, this hood of hot springs. It says these curses was going to be for a sign. So let me ask you this. What's the purpose of a sign? If you put a sign on anything, what does it do? It what? Help people out. How does it help them? You know? What about you, sis? What does a sign do? Um, give you a direction. Give you a direction. But uh, I want a certain word. It identifies something. Because we went earlier, I asked, what race were you? Who do you, where do you come from? You understand? Because he said his last name is Henry. What was your last name? Robinson. Robinson. You think that, that was your ancestor's name when they got off that boat? What about your last name, sis? See, see, and that's how you know it's an embarrassment. Sis don't even want to give it. Because guess what? Emerly, in the spirit, we know that that is a curse of God. But guess what? One of the curses of us, we was going to leave off from our name. That's how we know we are the Israelites because the Israelites wouldn't know who they are in the last days.
Nation is family. Nation is community. Nation is men leading by example. Nation is women's support. Nation is children with role models. Nation is unity. Nation 